Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of this Next Generation Discussion mini-series. I am your host, Martin, and today I am joined by Colin as well as special guest Mr. Mario 2011. If you want to check out part 1 and part 2, those will be linked in the description below. Anyways, without further ado, please enjoy the rest of the video. Anyways, I think it's time to move on to the next company uh, <laughs> right now, which is a lot more straightforward than Microsoft, thankfully, because... Thankfully, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thankfully, because... I mean, really, we haven't really heard a lot about Sony. Um, there's nothing even concrete at all, and there was that weird Reddit rumor that appeared about the PlayStation 5, but honestly, I'm not really listening to Reddit rumors all that much. I'm going to stick with standard publications. So my, so the only thing we're really, we're really going to cover that's concrete is uh, basically an announcement from Sony themselves that they're not going to E3 2019. Um, so, which is kind of batshit crazy when you first hear it, but then when you kind of look into it, it's kind of, okay, I can maybe see the reasoning. Uh, so, Mario, what do you think about their decision to skip E3? Uh, first of all, I will say I was absolutely shocked on that, but I also think, uh, it's not just limited to Sony, I think this is kind of telling of the environment in general of these big trade shows. Uh, I feel like E3 has really lost quite a bit of its exclusivity and value and everything, and I wouldn't say Nintendo started it, but it, they certainly helped a little bit with this, with uh, well, with with kind of doing their own thing, with doing Nintendo Direct. So they just have you know their own coordinated events and stuff. They have everything edited. They can just get it out to people when they want it to. They don't have to worry about any stage mishaps. And then they started kind of just doing their own setup at E3. They had a direct specifically for E3 as well. So they still they would still have a presence at E3, but they wouldn't do the traditional conference. Sony skipping this, uh, this seems like they, they kind of said, hey, look, guys, we really dropped our load and our stuff. We're just going to be honest with you. We don't have anything big to show you. We're just busy working in the background. And that's kind of what I told you all before, at least when, before we start recording this, where it seems like Sony's just kind of saying, hey, we're busy working right now. We're kind of in the middle where nothing is really ready to show. So we're just not going to show you anything. We're just going to skip out this year. Sorry about that. So the good news is Microsoft, since they're the only big one, I mean, they're the only big hardware person coming out. They better have a really good show. I really do hope they have a good show just for this sake. But even so, at this point, it's kind of questioning when I talk about, you know, the landscape and the environment, it's kind of questioning if any of these places really need E3 because Nintendo has Nintendo Direct and it was really weird when they first started doing it. But now after so many years, it seems to be standard. And they have a few directs every year. They're 20, 30, 40 minutes, something like that. Again, they have control over everything. Sony has PlayStation experience. Uh, so they have, you know, their own little thing. And Microsoft even started doing Inside Xbox recently. Um, so everyone has their own type of branded either stream or highly cut up video that they're doing. And, and finally, with, with E3 itself, yeah, E3 is big, but you also have to take into account the international audience as well, too, because there's a lot of big announcements, and if not an announcement, there's a lot of big gameplay reveals that are skipping E3, and they're going to Game Developer Conference and Gamescom. Gamescom is pretty much the new E3 now at this point. I really don't know if them skipping E3 uh, is a... Yeah, they're working on a new console thing or or just them out of games or or something else I, I the second one is easy to say namely because they've been let, let's be honest they've been showing the same five games at every e3 conference <laughs> for like three years in a row i am sick and tired of seeing days gone it doesn't look good it never looked good it probably won't be good um I, I was getting sick of seeing that uh, that new movie that they keep trying to say is a God of War game, but I, that's not God of War. All they have left after that is, like, The Last of Us Part 2 and Death Stranding, which, 
they don't need to devote an entire conference to two games. You could argue that Nintendo dedicated a whole conference to Breath of the Wild, which was really outlandish at the time. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I, I, I really I really don't know what it means for them. Uh, I just remember, you know, they didn't have a PlayStation experience this year, and last year when they did a PlayStation experience, it was completely unbearable and unwatchable and boring. And uh, this year's E3 was not much better. <laughs> it's really the only thing you can say, because we have nothing on, on what the PlayStation 5 is. There's no rumors or anything about it, which, thank God, <laughs> I don't want to be... I don't want to know what Sony's kind of come up with next. Um, I mean, all I can really say about the PlayStation 5 as of now is we can just kind of assume what it is. So here's me assuming what the PlayStation 5 is. Uh, it'll have an AMD APU. It will be 4K focused. It'll have a 4K blue blu-ray drive uh it it would be nice if they put the psvr processor box in the console instead of making it a separate unit they'll probably make a new psvr with new controllers and um it'll probably play ps4 games real good that i i, I feel like that's the the safest thing you can say about the ps5 as for as for a new sony handheld or a possible Sony Switch competitor? No. No. <laughs> That's... No. I, I, I've i heard rumors that Sony has thought about making a Vita 2 uh, because the Vita was doing really well near the end with indie games, which is kind of what Nintendo is doing now with the Switch, where the Nintendo's getting all the indie game support. Um... But I really doubt Sony was genuinely thinking about making a handheld for just indie games. When, when, despite indie games being really cool, still don't sell console units. Which is a very, very, very sad fact. But, um, also a portable PS4. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say it's not, I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's, it's improbable. I think I think one question I have for you guys is, is really because uh, one thing I did note is when you were saying that experience and E3 were kind of unbear unbearable. Are E3 conferences really needed anymore? I haven't looked at the numbers of you know attendees and streams and all that stuff, but like E3 2018, I'm not saying it was a bad E3, but it was the first E3 that I did not sit through the conferences because I'm just it was the I just kind of E3 where thought of it and it I said wasn't... there's a lot of fluff on these conferences and there's yeah there's cool stuff but what I'm just gonna do I'm gonna cherry pick I'm just going to wait for the synopsis to come out and I'm just going to watch the trailers for games that look interesting to me and <laughs> skip all the fluff and. I very much enjoyed that experience more. It wasn't... It was the first E3 that wasn't a cringe compilation. Hmm. For for once. <laughs> there wasn't, like, really dumb stuff. E3 conferences are big commercials, but, like... I don't know. I think it's fun to get, like, friends around and, like, snark at whatever new games are coming out. I, I think, like, Microsoft's been doing a really good job with their E3 conferences. I think, uh, even... even when everyone was hating them with the launch of the Xbox One, I think they've been sort of up and upping the show. They've been trying to kind of uh, be like, yeah, I know, you know, we know what you guys want. We know you want games. Here are games. You know, we'll, we'll try to lay off all that nonsense. Um, each Sony conference has been like, oh, look how, look how cool we are, you guys. We're going to announce uh, a, a Kickstarter for Shenmue 3. And a trailer for a Final Fantasy VII remake that will never happen for another 10 years. And and you guys are going to love it. Yeah, E3 2015 screwed them over, like, hard. Like, they, yeah. I mean, it was good, but, like, what one 
well, like one game, no, two games that were like bomb drops aren't even released yet, and the Last Guardian was. Oh yeah, the Last Guardian happened, and it, oh wow, it was it was just okay. It was, it was kind of. An I very game. much enjoyed the Last Guardian, but I will also acknowledge that it was very much okay. It it did it did yeah. feel like a PS3 game that was in the oven for way too long and got ported to PS4 in the end. Uh, I don't know. It, it's it's. I think the bigger question is, do you guys think that Sony's going to have a separate event where the, where the PS5 will be revealed in 2019, or do you think they're going to save the reveal till next year? I don't know. I, I mean, there's there's been rumors of PS5 being 2019, and I just don't want it to be true more than me thinking that it's not true. It, it would be weird if they had, like, a console reveal earlier in the year. And then they were like, yep, no E3 conference for no new games. There's just a new console coming. Bye. You know. I think it would be, be like... realistic to see a reveal in 2020. Thinking of that, the PS3 came out in yeah. 2013. The PS4 Pro came out three years later. So then four years after the Pro and seven years after the original, I, I think that's acceptable to announce, hey, we have a yeah. new system coming out. And then at that point, you still have another three years technically to support the original PS4, so then that way, that's easy enough, that's attainable, and Sony sticks their 10-year life cycle promise on PlayStation hardware. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like Sony will, will I, I mean, I feel and I want them to play the next PlayStation to be incredibly safe. We've seen what happens when they get really cocky, which is when we get the PS3, which is a it's Ridge Racer. <laughs> Everything about that console is a mess. Uh, even after they fixed some of the problems, it's still a mess. The only thing that wasn't bad about it is that unlike the 360, it didn't kill itself for fun. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think Sony's going to play it safe next gen. I think they're just going to make uh, a, a new you know, powerful console, something either on par with the One X or maybe a bit more, and they'll just keep pushing for VR, but otherwise it'll just just kind of be a new PlayStation. Um, now, when I said earlier that my prediction about crossplay would be factored into the ninth gen, and th this is the part when we're going to talk about it because... I think that Sony, another aspect of Sony is that I actually don't think they're going to loosen up on crossplay. I think they've been making strides, but I think all of it is basically for PR. I, I don't know. I just don't I, I agree with you on that. I think they're only going to bend under pressure and they'll just be like, okay, here, here's like the one game you were asking for. Yeah, that's kind of already what they're doing now. If they did care, they would just drop the act they just announced a new power rangers fighting game that's gonna have cross play and cross progression with everything but playstation again it's like it's really obvious that they just don't want to do it i because I, I sincerely doubt any of these developers are doing it i remember when uh they announced like fortnite was getting that quote-unquote beta cross play i saw a lot of people saying Oh, when is Bethesda gonna like, uh, you know, are they gonna be, are they gonna do cross play with Fallout 76 now that PlayStation is doing cross plat? I bet they're only doing it to make Microsoft look better. And it's like, no, they're not gonna do it because I guarantee Sony is still saying no just because they said maybe tee hee to one game, uh, and nothing else. I think really, really, uh, I think really shows that they're gonna, they're gonna, go against crossplay uh, kicking and screaming uh, I will say this if they don't implement crossplay I actually think this might be the generation where their sales might hit a little bit because I think there's a lot of people that are liking crossplay and it's adding a lot to the gaming experience and if they can't do it on PlayStation then they then people might search for all their alternatives and I'm hoping I'm hoping this ain't another phase where, like, the the console manufacturer is getting too stubborn. And it just it reminds me of pre-PS3 Sony, where they're going into this console, like, super just bulked up, like, oh, you know, we're the baddest people on the planet. Not as bad as PS, like, pre-PS3 Sony, 
but like it's getting there and i just don't want See, the the i i I, i've heard that sentiment a lot and i agree that they are getting cocky and when they get cocky they ruin things but as i said before i i feel like sony's just gonna play it safe anyway with and, and I, I mean even even with going against crossplay, I think their the next console will just will just be a new PlayStation. They they won't try to make because the PS3 was this weird. The PS2 came out in a time when people thought the PS2 was so powerful that like Saddam Hussein was gonna like SLI twenty of them together to make a supercomputer. And then I guess someone heard that at Sony and said, you know what, that would be a good idea. Because, like, the PS3 is, like, a weird quantum computer that can't do quantum computing. It had folding at home on it, so that's, like, the definition of it. You could fold with your PS3. You could. Uh, Like, the the whole meme with the cell was that they were using it in, like, the clusters they used to render special effects for movies. But at some point, they forgot that that doesn't translate to rendering video games. So they ended up making this thing with a really underpowered GPU, two sets of RAMs, and a CPU that couldn't do anything. And it ended up being like $900 to produce because they also slapped a Blu-ray drive in it. And they wanted you to plug in like... Have you guys seen the 2005 PS3 reveal? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Have you seen the back of the console where the thing had like... uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was like three... No, it had two hdmi ports it had two ethernet ports and it had like like eight usb ports i feel like that's pro i mean that's a prototype if anything i haven't seen the back of the console so but that's just that's just yelling prototype to me no that's that's the console they showed on the show floor uh (laughs) and it was really dumb because they wanted you to like also install linux on it and yeah, I just uh, searched for it, and holy crap, that's... Yeah, no, it's it's really something to behold. Put it up on yeah, screen right now. Yeah, can you right link now. that to it's... me? I don't think I've seen that, it. <laughs> that thing is ridiculous. You have three US, uh, Ethernet ports. I'm sorry. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, no, I've never seen this until now. I still they, feel they, like they, this is really prototypey, if that. They genuinely... No, I think they actually said in the conference the idea was they wanted you to actually like continuously land these things together like an Atari Lynx. Interesting. Like they wanted you, like they wanted you to be able to take uh, one of the Ethernet ports and plug it into your uh, your. Um... They genuinely thought using Ethernet cables, you'd be able to hook up like four of these things together and then have like the 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 greatest LAN thing ever. Yeah, and then like, that, like and then that didn't happen. They because they they, yeah, they think that, that people have never heard of a unmanaged switch. But like they. <laughs> They also saw, thought this thing would be able to do dual screens, or at least a uh, 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 dual monitor gaming. Probably, well, not dual mon. I'm sure they wanted to do it for computing purposes, but yeah, that thing has two HDMI outs, like, and a multi out. Like, I don't. This thing is wonderful to look at. <laughs> also, it had no vent holes. <laughs> Yeah, so with the, so with the no <laughs> vent holes, that that's still screaming very prototype. Yeah, to no, me. that's that's definitely screaming prototype. Yeah, I I doubt there's even uh, anything in there to be to be honest. I'd be willing to bet that's a dummy console, and that's it. When they revealed that console, I think they said it was like six months to launch. Mm-hmm. They <laughs> and and then it got delayed because you know the boomerang controller that thing is impossible as well. Is just. Man. man, oh yeah, man! Boomerang. I just, I just want to see a boomerang controller in, in person, just one time, <laughs> <laughs> just one time. That's it. I really hope they. Uh, I don't know. I hope. I hope Sony has like a weird, like almost PlayStation store in New York, and I would love to put them to put like I would love them to put some stuff on display like Nintendo does. Mm-hmm. That'd be really great to look at. Yeah, honestly, a new boomerang controller is more likely than a new PS4 exploit. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, there there are PS4 exploits that have been found just privately. I, I'd say it's more likely than a new successor to the Vita. Yeah, life is, is dead. Vita is dead. The next one is Nintendo. And Nintendo, I would say, is the more interesting one. This isn't for, like, a next-gen console. Just more so of an iteration of their current console. Which, ironically, would technically still be 8th-gen when the new ninth gen 
consoles come out, so it, it's it's weird. It's it's weird labeling, but uh, I guess we'll get used to it then. But uh, well, basically what we're going to talk about is some stuff that's been known for about a year, but how it really ties in to reports that have come out by the Wall Street Journal. So I'm well, basically what we're going to do is cover both of these headlines at the same time because one intertwines with the other. Uh, so the first thing that's mentioned is the quote-unquote Mariko data mine. I think a lot of people know about this. Basically, a new chipset for the Switch that's going to be based on the Tegra 214. Um, pretty pretty simple. It was included in, I believe, 5.0 last year. Um, and I, Mr. Mario, I think you and I had a discussion on that too. Yeah, I was going to say, the last time we talked, we were talking about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we just thought it'd be motherboard revision, but, like, the newer Switches have just a patched boot ROM, and that's it. It's, like, the base Switch model, which is crazy. So there might be more to this, but I don't know. What really ties this whole thing together is the Wall Street Journal report. Basically, the Wall Street Journal has some sources, supposedly, from the manufacturing side of things, and apparently Nintendo is thinking of ways to improve the Switch. And one example they gave was like improved screens or, you know, just uh, improved memory and stuff like that. So, and it, this potential Switch model might launch earliest during the summer. Um, so uh, that's, that's pretty much it. It, it. From my, I'm just going to say it right out of the gate. From my perspective, it just seems like an AGS 101 style revision. Like if you remember the, the, the revision the Game Boy Advance had, at least the SP model, it just had a better backlight for the AGS 101, and it, I yeah. think they might. I think it might go a similar route with the Switch, where it's just oh, you get improved uh, uh, memory, you get improved screens. Hell, maybe the Joy Cons won't break off, or you know something like that. Or they might upgrade the USB standard, like USB 3.1. I remember you know? the last time you and I talked about this, we were talking about it more from a exploity hacky type instance. But I mean, the boot ROM exploit that was out, that's already been patched on systems out and. We've talked about this board is not available in the wild yet so yeah I, i'd be partial to agree with you where it's probably just going to be an ags 101 style update where there'll be the necessary little updates and tweaks and kind of quality of life stuff that needs to be done on there but i don't think it's going to be anything huge i've gone on twitter and i've i've, I've done my big old little rant before <laughs> about why I think the Switch Pro is not going to be a thing. I, I think there's there's plenty of, of uh, sort of semi-convincing arguments. Uh, Nintendo has never done a power revision of their consoles. And I when I say consoles, I do mean consoles. I do not mean portables. Uh, no, the SNES Mini is not a power revision. Whoever said that on Twitter to me and thought that was an actual reply... That's not how that works. Well, why would someone say that? I don't know. <laughs> they also thought the N64s that couldn't do stop and swap were, were considered power revisions. Yeah, yeah that, though, neither of those were power revisions. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't think... Okay, so here's... The Switch has, I think, one big problem. And that's not even, like, the actual power of the console itself. It's the power in handheld mode. Because I think that's, like, half of what the Switch can do in docked mode, I think, is the generally agreed upon statistic. Is that it's just, like, clock speeds half. All that. All right. Something along those um, lines, sure. Yeah, that, that's that's just what I've heard. That's And that's what I've been parroting for a while. Um, there's, like... I think we're going to see Switch revisions. I don't think we're going to be seeing Switch power revisions. Or if we do, they're they're not they're not going to be major. And I think that's the thing I, I kind of want to point out with with Mariko because it says here that there was some some data mining that found that there was going to be a, a new Switch revision that had a new PCB. A revision of the Tegra, the 214, and possibly 8 gigs of RAM? It's totally possible that a Tegra v revision and that new PCB are just a different footprint. Like, just kind of shrinking it down for maybe better cooling or sure. something. Which is not even that weird of a concept. 
uh, especially with game consoles, and 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 that leads to the Wall Street Journal Journal reports, which are just analysts like assuming things as well. I think because because Martin and I talked about this before, we even had a discussion that I don't think we ever published, and and that's. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's mostly assumptions. It's never really concrete, you know, hard evidence. And and even then, it, it could lead to nothing. Um, it, I said the word silent revision a lot when we were talking about this initially. Um, which is something that, uh, I, I think, like, I think what we're going to see next with the Switch is we're going to see, um, similar to what Sony did, with the PlayStation 4, where they have a version of the PS4 that's new, but it's not the slim, so they didn't call it anything differently. But I don't know if, if you guys know about this, but basically when they released Uncharted 4, they released a like a pre-slim PS4 model that had an all-matte finish. The touch buttons were replaced with real clicky buttons. And the internal motherboard was shrunk down and uses less power. Yeah, no, I, I remember and, that revision. I never picked it up, but I wanted it. Yeah, uh, and they've done the same thing with the PS4 Pro now, where the new PS4 Pros that are coming out, the ones that are in like the Spider-Man bundles, are quieter because they have a smaller motherboard and a couple internal changes. I think that's just what they're going to do with the Switch. I think that's just what Merico is. I, I, I mean, the 8 gig RAM thing is is the the one thing that i'm very unsure of um i don't even know if adding more ram to the console could really like crazy improve things outside of just better texture streaming or something i'd say this the the eight and uh, so, sorry i'll just in interject this real quick the eight gigs of ram i don't think i would see that in a retail yeah. revision of the system unless they do a switch pro which this is not it. However, I there's no reason to add more RAM unless there's actually new hardware to complement. Well, it. the only reason why I would see new uh, eight gigs of RAM being put in there is for a development revision of it, so you can use that extra four gigs for <laughs> debugging and development. But yeah. then you know the final code would have to be optimized and changed up to use the four gigs of RAM, which I think has been semi confirmed that that early dev kits of the switch did use eight gigs of ram yeah or basically yeah basically from what i know the wii u dev kits as well as the switch dev kits like mid-generation got like upgrades to the ram specs um to eight gigs so it, it was it was pretty much what nintendo normally does yeah um so so i think I personally, uh, I, I've, I've sort of held on to this. I don't think we're going to see a Switch Pro. I think Nintendo is straight up going to wait until mid-next generation and then make a Switch 2. Yeah, I can see that. I don't, I, I think, honestly, it's too soon for a, like, moder like a modest yeah. Switch upgrade. You, you don't, <laughs> sort of going back to what I was saying earlier... The handheld mode is considerably less powerful than the, the current docked mode. If they make a new Switch, you run the risk of making the handheld mode on the original Switch obsolete. So you either have to make a Pro revision that's not that much more powerful, or you have to drop the original model, which they are in a situation where they cannot do that or else that would endanger everything. So... I personally think they're just going to wait until they make a new system. I know people are going to mention the new 3DS, and here's me saying, doesn't mean anything. See, I'm, I would actually wage the opposite. Not that a Switch Pro is going to happen. I can actually envision a Switch Mini happening. Yeah, because, like, I, I personally, I really enjoy the Switch in handheld mode. I'd say that's safely 90% of my usage on it. But especially for, like, younger users, like, that thing is, like, th this thing does not fit in my pockets. Come on. I think a Switch Mini is possible. I just, the, the only thing that comes to mind is, uh, would it use Joy-Cons or would it have 
the uh, the things kind of solidified like into the system. Um, what's the battery life gonna be? Will they have to underclock it more? What's the screen? Um, <coughs> which which are all things that are probably could just be answered with, yeah. But <laughs> that I mean, those things could harm it in the in the long run. I feel like a switch that's smaller is gonna need a smaller battery, and uh, unless the switch mini is like underclocked further, the battery life on that thing is gonna be awful. But I digress. I, I will say that if they do make a Switch Mini and somehow make the battery life comparable, it would actually be perfect to launch it during the holiday season because that's when most likely Pokemon Gen Eight, uh, Gen Nine, I think, or yeah, is coming. So that makes sense. Um, would sell like hotcakes. I think it is in. I think it is important to mention though that and people have pointed this out that um, time and time again, when Nintendo talks about the switch they do always call it a home console they don't call it a portable uh and i think also a lot of that is just due to the fact that they still have the 3ds and they 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 at least say they're gonna keep supporting it so you know i i i think we're gonna get a a silent new switch that's just like cleaned up better build quality cooler uh has more storage, has a kickstand that's metal, maybe. Now, I, um, I do want to mention, and I think this is a line that really hasn't been brought up in a while, because it's kind of been forgotten, but back in 2015, when the NX was formally revealed as the NX, um, Satoru Iwata said that, um, I, I can't remember if it was at the DNA conference or if it was later, but that the NX will be, quote, a family of systems. And oh, that's a good one. Yup. I remember that being said somewhere. And I'm not wondering if maybe, and this is just far out there, maybe if they're going to make, like, a home console variant that's going to be more powerful. But I don't know. That's just my speculation and is very far out there. But I don't think they're going to do a docked-only switch. I feel like... Because when did he... He said that... That would have been, like, 2015, right? Yeah, that was, like, way back. Yeah. I, 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 I imagine that he said it. I imagine that... Because that sounds like a quote that someone who was looking at a concept super early on would, would consider it. But it's also just totally possible that... Because, I mean... It really just comes down to how far back they they had solidified plans for the Switch and things it would do. And I'm willing to bet, knowing Nintendo and how they developed their consoles, no. I, 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 I Part of me says that they didn't have a clear picture of what the Switch was going to be in 2017 all the way back in 2015. Um... And on, on top of that, that quote, even even if it, like, even if he knew, that quote could also just mean he's referring to Labo or, or other methods of docking the Switch into something else, which is totally possible. I actually think, I, I and this is going into Nintendo in 2019 discussion, which you guys, well, at least you and Nanten did, I didn't, um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was, like... <laughs> A more advanced Labo coming out that's like this is gonna sound weird remember when they made like Bionicles that had like full computers inside them <laughs> kind of you know what I'm talking about or unless it was some other Lego I branding remember, that just uh, had, like that, the Lego Mindstorm had... robots yeah there you go yeah that's what I'm, I'm looking for they had like almost calculators built into them basically and you could like plug them into your Windows 98 computer and program it to do stuff i wouldn't be surprised if the next iteration of of labo or something is like a series of rc cars and battle bots and stuff that you can build but you slap your switch in and it does all of like the programming stuff i think like like i, I that's probably what it could have meant because i feel like concepts like a dock only switch or 
a handheld only switch um i don't know they just don't <coughs> they make sense but they don't seem super appealing because there are some games where the handheld experience is nowhere near as comparable as the docked experience like like i think it's safe to say that there's like a good chunk of uh nintendo games that are just just flat out better in docked than they are in portable but like a docked only switch would also just feel like like oh it's just a worse playstation <laughs> or a worse xbox you know because when you play wolfenstein 2 or doom on on like the switch you're like like in docked you're like yeah this is fine but like i could I, but like the, the whole meme is i can pull the console out and play whenever if it's just like a generic black box that's playing games at 720p 30 i don't think anyone's gonna you know jump onto that yeah no don't don't consoleize mobile hardware because and i'm yeah. not even knocking a switch but i'm just saying it, it is and it's impressive for what it is but it is mobile hardware so when you're playing wolfenstein yeah. 2 that's a mobile version of wolfenstein 2 which is incredibly it's also not it a is. good game don't buy wolfenstein i, 2. I did it's, buy it's... wolfenstein 2 and yeah i'm not that crazy about it but i'm also it's playing not it a good game. i'll also just say technically on switch as well when i'm playing it i i heard a lot of praise about the technicalities of like doom and wolf Wolfenstein, and I'm playing it, I'm like, dude, nobody can convince me here, this is just as good just because I can take it around. Like, no, this thing, the colors look bad, it's blurry, the field of view makes me feel kind of sick because it's just so There's, close. They produced an update that makes the game run at a much higher resolution and the frame rate's way more stable. But yeah, there there are times when you're playing Wolfenstein 2 where you're like, oh cool, it's a gray blob on a gray background. Oh, I've had so much fun taking screenshots of all the blobs. Like whenever yeah. I see something that's just like a gray slab of tofu, I take a picture because it just makes me giggle a little bit. But that's also not what should be expected from a $60 game, which is why I got it on yeah. a deep sale. But I mean, it's... I, I would say it's at least way better now. Hey, man, it's, we, it's at least we got like... Ark Survival Instinct on the Switch, all right? <sighs> Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that really awful port. Uh, especially when you got, like, Warframe and Paladins and Doom showing how it should be done. Yeah, Colin, I know you ranted about that on one of our Good Morning Source gaming episodes. So if, if you want to see him rant about that game, check out one <laughs> yeah. of those episodes. It's it Check expensive. out the last episode. It should be like episode 12 or something. I talked about art. Yeah, but I, I think this whole consolization thing kind of goes into my one bold prediction for this video. Um, so you got to have one bold prediction for the next generation, and I'm going to make it for Nintendo. I think that the next quote-unquote Switch model isn't going to be a standard Switch. I think it's going to be a Switch integrated into a NVIDIA Shield. I think they're going to pull a Panasonic Q and bundle it in, and I think the primary market is going to be for China, because I think they're going to want the Switch branding to take off in some way in China, and I think that's going to be the way the Switch branding gets in to China, infiltrates it. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I can see that happening. China's that big market, man. And as of a few years ago, they also legalized consoles. So, <laughs> we'll see. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think that uh, it, it might sound a little bit far-fetched because it would get rid of the whole point of the Switch. But really, I think that they don't really have a choice in China. Um, they just want to get the Switch branding in there, so I think they might do that. Although, I'm pretty sure a lot of people from maybe America or Europe would probably start importing it, like Cal. So, <laughs> if that was the case, but, uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think about that prediction, Colin? Do you think it's far-fetched? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Nintendo's going to try to cross-brand with anything or any other hardware anytime soon, knocking on wood. Um... I, I think they're just going to stick to doing what works for them. Uh, I mean, Nintendo themselves is adding Chinese support to the Switch to bring it over. So I, I don't think they need to like meld with the, uh, the NVIDIA Shield. And on top of that, I, I think we were kind of talking about this yesterday in a personal conversation. NVIDIA has said nothing about their future mobile chips. I wouldn't be surprised... If going forward, um, 
NVIDIA focused on their mobile chips, not just for, like, AI and, and cars, but uh, also just for whatever Nintendo wants to do next. I don't know if this is a bold prediction or not, but if, if, if we, if Nintendo really is waiting for, like, like, it, if we get the Switch 2 in, like, 2033, like, not 2030, well, uh, I'm thinking about Metro, uh, in 2023, say we get a new Switch, which I think is fine, that'd be, like, you know, like, five years after the original came sure. out, I think that's a fine life cycle for the Switch, considering it's hardware, uh, they'll still be making games for the Switch, I think, well into the new, the, into the next gen, because, th as you said, the base Xbox One and PS4 will still be around, and you can still kind of port, you know, it'll be fine, but, like, I would not be surprised if the Switch 2 in 2023 had, like, like ray tracing technology in it. And I'm not saying, like, oh, it's going to be powered by, like, a 2080 Ti. But what I'm saying is, like, it's going to be... It's going to use the fact that it's a, a, a very maybe underpowered mobile chip, but it's going to be using all this new uh, technology, like AI upscaling, so that games uh, look way better. And, and and have maybe uh like like so basically they can they can still get away with using lower end hardware but use new technologies to make it look a lot better which is kind of what the switch is doing now with all of its like dynamic resolutions and and all sorts of other trickery that it kind of does behind the scenes to get games looking as good as they do on that tech hmm yeah it could it could work it could work it could definitely work uh especially because I think that technology would be significantly cheaper, you know, five years down the line. So, yeah, yeah uh, that would definitely work. But I think right now the common consensus is the new revision possibly coming this year is not going to be uh, the Switch Pro at all. I mean, even you and I, Mario, said that in the past discussion. No Switch Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not thinking that. I, I, I'm really thinking, I, I, I'm still thinking it'd be cool if we had like a Switch Mini or something like that. Um, but even if we do get uh, not not like a Switch Pro or anything, but if we do hop into kind of just going back to uh, how long console cycles last and everything, uh, if in a few years we do get the Switch Pro and people say, oh, it's only been four or five years since the Switch released, that's kind of Nintendo's life cycle. Uh, I've noticed that uh, aside from the Wii, I, I feel like Nintendo is still kind of sticking to that three to five year life cycle for their consoles. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Part 4 will cover the other possible competitors coming into the next generation. Be sure to follow us on our social media pages, including our Facebook and Twitter accounts. Be sure to also support us on Patreon to receive exclusive perks. We want to thank our super patron, Duke of Dorks. His channel will be linked in the description below. We hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you in the next one.